We all know that still images of architectural structures and environments can provide a wealth of visual information in snapshot form. By capturing these same places and spaces in full motion video, in effect adding the element of movement and the dimension of time, you can provide for an even deeper understanding about how a structure interacts with its surroundings and how it's experienced by people, how it lives within its environment. That's why the Society of Architectural Historians launched JSAH Online, to enable authors to illustrate their published scholarship with a variety of media, zoomable color photography, panoramic photography, 3D models, direct links to locations in Google Maps, audio recording, and video, our subject today. Hi, I'm Carrie Reese, a video producer working in Philadelphia. There can be a lot to talk about when you're first learning how to create good video, but happily, the basic principles are simple and fairly intuitive. Let's take the next couple of minutes to talk about the fundamentals, those things you'll need to keep in mind when learning how to shoot video. Once you have the basics down, we want you to give it a try. Don't be intimidated by the technology. Have confidence in your aesthetic judgment and learn to trust your eyes. So first, we'll talk briefly about equipment and then planning your video, shooting your video, and finally, getting your video ready for the web. Choosing video equipment can be overwhelming, and for good reason. It's expensive, there are so many different camera options available now, and the technology choices are confusing. Let's talk some simple guidelines. Since we're making video to put online, and that means digital, make sure your camera is digital to start with. That means no VHS and no Hi8. Even though it's handy to shoot video with your smartphone, the movie function on your still camera, or the newer ultra-portable flip-type cameras, these are not good choices for the type of video that we're talking about today. They just won't give you the image quality you'll want for sharing with other scholars, nor the image control or stability, so save these for a family vacation video. In general, the cameras you should be considering will use one of the digital video standards listed as DV, DV Cam, Mini DV, HDV, and even HD for high def. All of these are variations on digital video. Today, you'll find cameras that record to tape or write to a disc and some that go right to a digital hard drive. Any of these are good choices but think about what's going to work best for you. As with any electronics, you're going to find options for just about any price that you're willing to spend. In general, I'd expect to spend about two to three hundred dollars for the entry-level version of the type of camera we're talking about today. When buying new equipment, take some time and do your research. Talk to friends and colleagues, read the product reviews, and try to get your hands on an actual camera to get a feel. And choose a reputable brand. Sony and Panasonic are a couple of reliable makers. And of course, you may want to look into equipment rental options within your institution or city. Now let's talk about tripods, an essential part of shooting any good landscape or architecture video, especially for the web. When picking out your tripod, lift it up, see that it feels sturdy and stable, and that you'll be able to get a smooth, fluid motion when using it to pan the horizon or tilting up and down. And check to be sure it'll connect easily to your camera. This is a good place for a quick word on audio, which can be a bit complicated, but since we're not talking about recording musical performances or interviews, it's actually pretty easy. To capture the natural sounds of the world around you, ambient audio, the mic that's built into just about any camera you'll be using should work just fine. Once you have your camera equipment, read the manual and get comfortable with your camera's settings, like focus and aperture, and see if it has any useful presets to help you shoot in different situations. Now that you have the basics, let's get ready to shoot. We're here at historic Franklin Field at the University of Pennsylvania. 
Designed by Charles Clauder, it was built in two phases, in 1922 and 1925. It will be our star today. Before you hit the record button, a little planning can go a long way. Try to visit the site first without being weighed down by your equipment and use your eyes to find the most compelling and informative features of your subject. And then find the best place to set up to capture them. You'll learn that your eye and your camera do see things differently, but it's easier to first move around and see creatively without your camera. Pay close attention to your light source, which is probably going to be the sun. And notice how the sunlight hits your subject during different times of the day and how the shadows fall. You will definitely not want to point your camera toward your light source. The rule is that you want your light source behind you and your camera, illuminating your subject. Believe it or not, overcast days like today make for perfect shooting days. And one other tip, you won't have a power source to use outside, so make sure your batteries are fully charged. Having an extra camera battery on hand is always a good idea. So let's go shoot some video. It's a great idea to capture your subject from several different angles and distances. This will give your viewer a fuller understanding of what it's like to be in this space. So think of an interesting and logical way to take your viewers through your subject. First, you'll need what's called an establishing shot. It's simply the first thing that the viewer sees. It's an image that helps them immediately understand where they are and what they're looking at. It could be a really wide shot from a distance where you frame the entire building, or you can look for some useful signage to shoot. Here, you can see our scoreboard has the name of our building, Franklin Field. The scoreboard is actually on adjoining Waitman Hall, built in 1903 and 1904, and designed by Frank Miles Day. I'll start by framing the signage, and then pull back and pan so that the whole structure starts to come into view. Be creative with how you frame your shot. Sometimes it's more interesting to have your subject composed so it's not always right in the middle of the frame. Try it a few different ways and use your eyes to see what works best. Then, move to your next spot, set up again, frame your image, and record. My Franklin Field video will start with my establishing shot. Then I'll find other interesting angles to shoot. I'll find some good medium-wide shots, and then some close-up shots of interesting architectural details. Using smooth motion can be visually interesting and helps orient your viewer. Your tripod is there to help you get that done. Keep in mind that online streaming video favors somewhat slower motion. And I've decided that my closing shot will be very wide, recorded from inside a nearby tall building. This shot reveals urban Philadelphia around Franklin Field to help provide some useful context to our subject. Let's call that a wrap and head inside. Now we're ready to take our raw footage and edit. Here I'll need to be somewhat general because every system will be different based on the type of camera media you used, the type of computer that you have, and the editing software that you've chosen. But the basic steps are pretty much the same. First, you'll need to capture your footage from your camera into your computer. For me, that means connecting my camera to my laptop. Then, I play back the tape with my editing software set to capture the footage. I'm using Final Cut Pro for the Mac. I'll just start rolling my tape and hit Now in my editor. Now that I've captured all my footage, I'm ready to edit. Again, the details will be different for you, but the basic principles are the same. First, I'm going to trim my shots down into clips of the very best parts and then assemble them in the order I want them here in my timeline. Now I can play it back to see how it looks and to see what further polish edits I might want to make. So now that my video is all done, I need to export it to a digital file so it can be uploaded and linked to on the web. The type of files that you'll be able to export might vary based on the standards of the system that you'll be using, but the most common type of files are QuickTime, AVI, MPEG-4, and Flash. Probably your best bet, and what I'll do today, is to export to an MPEG-4 file. 
So my MPEG-4 file is now exported and it's ready to be uploaded to the web. I think you'll find that using video will not only be a terrific way to share what you see, but will help you see differently and more deeply. Now I'm going to watch my video again. On the website for the Society of Architectural Historians, you'll find the full Notes to Contributors, which includes guidelines and specifications for preparing your videos, other illustrations, and text, along with instructions for submitting them to the Online Manuscript Management System.